What's up guys, Muller Reaver here with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and today we've got a fun one for you. Uh, we are fighting the final boss of the Cursed City of Centranos, that is Amius the Lunar Archon. Uh, if you've seen any of the other videos from other the content creators that get have been put out, uh, you know that this guy is absolutely crazy. He's got tons of mechanics, he's got two forms, there's wicked AI that nobody understands. Uh, you have to carefully go through the battle and make sure you're placing the right debuffs in the right spots and all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, so for this one, we're not going to do any of that. Uh, we got full auto, uh, minus a little bit at the start, but that's just because of how some champs are geared. Um, let it go. It's not necessarily 100%, but you only need to beat it once. Uh, and it's with one of my favorite uh, solo champs out there. What am I talking about? I am talking about Cronum. Uh, so self-revive in case he dies, you know, he just pops right back up uh, and he's going to handle this almost by himself, except for in the case of this one, he is bringing in a companion. Uh, that is another self-reviver. That would be Wukong over here. And then you can see we also have Jamarsa, which is who enables uh, Cronum. We're bringing in Lydia just because if you're familiar with the boss, he can revive if you kill him in the wrong phase, uh, so she can prevent that. And then we just have an extra champ in here for uh, our speed buff on the Masteries for Cronum. So let's take a look at the champs themselves. We'll go through the builds. Uh, they don't have any presets on this Polarium. We need presets uh, for the next iteration of Centranos, so make that happen. But let's take a look at our champs. Um, the two builds that really matter, obviously the best one is Cronum. Um, now mine's a plus four, does not need to be a plus four. Uh, you do want at least some Ascension Stars on him. That is going to prevent the damage that he actually takes, or some of the damage that he takes. You can see that I have mine in Regen and Immortal. Uh, I added the uh, Revenge accessories. Uh, his A1 extends HP burns. Uh, and the more HP burns we have up on the boss, the better, or the the longer we have the HP burn up, I should say. As far as stats you want to pay attention to, uh, basically you want to make him as tanky as possible. Uh, preferably over 290 speed is where we're going, and then you need about 400, 450 accuracy uh, in order to land those HP burns. As far as masteries go, we're going down the defense tree. I'm going down to... Uh, oppressor, however, if you need the extra accuracy, you can, of course, go down to Eagle Eye. Uh, Master Hexer to extend the chance of the burns that we place on the A2. Or, I'm sorry, on his A3. Uh, and then just turn meter boosts this, this one. Uh, otherwise. So just trying to get him to go as fast as possible. I uh, have Brimstone on him. That Brimstone proc is incredibly helpful, does tons of damage. But that's it. Pretty simple for him. Uh, the other important build really is then Wukong. Uh, same thing with him. Super tanky is all you really want to do. So mine's 290 speed, about the same speed, and then just as tanky as we can get him. I do have accuracy on him, um, so he can strip the... Uh, well, he places block debuffs, which gets converted to block buffs. Or, I'm sorry, he places block buffs, gets converted to block debuffs. And then we want to be able to strip that off as well. So we do have some accuracy on there too. Uh, also to land, uh, I put brimstone on him as well. Extra chance to just make sure it gets up as many times as possible. Masteries, I do have him down to Eagle Eye. Uh, basically, I just he was built for Arena. I just re-geared him. The Masteries are the same as they were for Arena. Nothing overly special about that. Again, just the brimstone... Forward. It's nice. Uh, you don't need it. Uh, I've seen some other people run this comp, and they don't have that on Wukong at all. Uh, but, yeah, just that simple. Uh, I guess we can go over the other ones. As far as Jamarsa goes, she's only in there to enable uh, Cronum, so she has literally zero gear. Uh, obviously the one food champ, and then Lydia... Lydia is only there to block the rebot, revive. Uh, I have her built for Hydra. Uh, if I could, I would actually take all of the gear off and just let her die immediately. Uh, however, I don't want to do that. So we're just going to actually 
manual the start until she dies, and then we'll be able to full, go full auto. So that's next. Uh, now, again, this is not 100%. It does not need to be 100%. We are not farming this boss. All you need to do is drop him once, uh, and then you're done. So let's get it started. So here we go. Uh, we're going to open with Chronum's A2 just to try to get that HP burn up. Uh, we also landed the Brimstone. And then pretty much we're going to A1 with everybody until all of the supporting cast dies. Which sometimes does take till he gets to his second form. Alright, so they're dead. We can click auto. That's it. We just let it run. Runs take about three and a half to seven minutes, depending on RNG, depending on how often you get those brimstone procs and the HP burn up. Um, again, if you happen to die, just restart it. It'll work eventually. But you can see he's just using mainly Wukong as target practice, while uh, Cronum is able to recycle his turns and get his passive back up so that he doesn't die. And that's it. That's the cycle. He does heal sometimes, so it is a bit of a back and forth. Uh, but that's it. We let it run. So that's what I got for you. Hope you enjoy it. We'll let the run finish out and see how it goes. But that's all you need from me. Thanks for hanging out, guys. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.